Thanks for checking out this Monster Mania wrap-up video. So I went to Monster Mania 43. If people have been following my channel long enough, you know uh, I love going to these conventions. I love the Monster Mania conventions. They're usually run very well, and they have a lot of good guests. Guests, sorry, every time. I do want to apologize <laughs> off the bat if my energy level is not what it normally is for my videos on this channel. Um, conventions take a lot out of me waiting in lines for long amounts of time and um you know takes a physical toll as you start to get older if you haven't noticed i got a lot of gray in my beard so i'm not a young man anymore so doing that type of stuff um gets you plus i i got up like super early because i wanted to get there really early make sure i got a close parking spot although uh they they have changed things i think starting with number 42 they started having it where they were getting uh parking it from some sort of like business park or business building so they were able to then like shuttle people over to the hotel which is the crown plaza in cherry hill new jersey which is where they have the convention so um i just didn't want to have to deal with that because it's a little bit of wasted time for me personally and i just wanted to get in line as soon as possible because I was there to meet Clyde Barker, who was one of the big names. Uh, Clyde Barker and Robert England were the really big ones. So actually, I figured to start this out for people who are watching this who don't know who was at the convention. I'll just run through real quick who was there. Um, like I said, Clyde Barker, Robert England, Ron Perlman, Ryan Hurst, Steve Yoon. Yoon? I, don't, I think that's how it's said. Uh, Rick Flair, Beverly D'Angelo, Devin Sawa, Vivica A. Fox, Eldon Henson, Shawnee Smith, Lance Henriksen, Skeet Ulrich, James Hong, Kathy Najimy, Daniel Harris, Tony Todd, Henry Thomas, Kate Siegel, Annabeth Gish, and Catherine Parker, who all four are from The Haunting of Hill House, uh, Ashley Lawrence, Doug Bradley, um, Nicholas Vince, Simon Bamford, Barbie Wilde, all Cenobites from Hellraiser, Kane Hodder, uh, Steve Knapp, Joey Lauren Adams, and a late addition was Lloyd Kaufman, who was doing autographs for free at the Troma booth, because they always have a spot as a vendor, Troma does. So um, this is the first time I've been to a Monster Mania, and Lloyd Kaufman showed up. So I didn't get, meet him or get his autograph, but I went by the booth, and he was there doing photo ops with people giving autographs. And uh seemed like a nice guy. seemed like he was having a good time. Everyone meeting him was having a good time. So... I'm always for that. I think it's really cool when people show up and do stuff like that. And they're like, hey, here's free autographs. Here's, you know, free photos. Uh, I really think that stuff's kind of cool. So good on Lloyd Kaufman. Um, so let me talk about specifically what I did. And then I'll, that'll just lead to me talking about other aspects of the actual convention. So I got there super early. I always buy like the pre-show one where you can get in an hour earlier. So instead of getting in at 10 o'clock when the autographs start, you get in at 9 o'clock when the vendor rooms open up. So you can kind of like leisurely go around, check out vendor stuff. But for me, if there's if there are big names and I get in there early, I just want to get in line immediately because, you know, you'll wait in less of a, in less of a line for the day. And that's kind of part of the goal. Um, so I got there and I was like immediately going to get in line. But it was a little weird because we were coming up to the front of the um, – of the hotel and there were two lines already formed out outside of the hotel. Usually the lines start forming inside, like right outside the, the rooms for where the autographs are. So, um, they were, I, I asked them at the, their help desk, which they're always super, super nice there, which by the way, in general, their volunteer staff is always crazy. Nice. Does a very good job. And I think it's kind of ridiculous at this point that they're just on a volunteer basis. I kind of really think that they should get paid, to be honest. So, you know, just my opinion. I think it's 2019. This volunteer stuff, I think, is kind of garbage. I think people should get a little bit of actual compensation for doing that type of stuff because these volunteers work hard and they do a great job. So shout out to all the Monster Mania volunteers. You guys do a great, do great work and I appreciate it. Um, I do thank them, too, when I run into these people and I see them, you know, doing a good job or have a good interaction. I'm always like, thank you very much. You're doing awesome. So. Uh, and I would encourage other people to, you know, give that feedback. It's appreciated. So anyway, I asked them and they said the two lines outside were for Robert England and were for Clive Barker because they were signing in personal, uh, in um, private rooms upstairs instead of in like the main signing areas for celebrities. 
So I understand lining up somewhere else, but the problem is the line started getting very long and it was very hot outside. It was very, it's been very humid. It's been, it's been very hot. And so people were just sweating immediately. The other issue that some other people brought up while standing in line is that they had bought, some people had bought pre-show passes and other people had just general admission and they were all just standing in the same line because it's outside of the convention. So for that reason, people who bought the pre-show didn't get an added benefit as far as getting in line for autographs go. So my kind of aim of get the pre-show, get in, get in, in line was totally null and void. Which, you know what, in the grand scheme of things, I don't really care about it that much, to be honest, but I heard a bunch of other people who were kind of upset about it. And it's, it's, it's valid. It is valid. So me personally, whatever, you know, just because I pay a little bit more money, I don't think I should necessarily get to get ahead of people in the line. But if I have that opportunity, I will take it. Um, so it doesn't make me mad, but some other people were, were vocal about it standing in line and are like, this is kind of BS cause I paid more in order to try and get further ahead in the line. So I don't know, but just to throw it out there. So the, th the thing that sucks is when you start your day waiting in a line where you're getting like really, really sweaty and gross and a bunch of other people are doing that, it's going to set the whole day up where you just feel like tired and sweaty and gross. And everyone around you is that way too. So for real, when I was going around at the convention, no matter where I went, it just smelled like B.O. And that's just kind of, that's what happens. I know they can't, I know that there's no way that the convention that early can keep can keep it from there being lines outside, really. Uh, they can't control that. But I do think what they should have done is allowed some people to get into the, the rooms next to the private signing rooms, which is where they put a bunch of chairs in and kind of like file people in and let them sit in there. For, they didn't open that up until like half an hour before the signing started. So I, f I felt like they should have just, you know, taken, taken people up much earlier would have been nice. The other thing that kind of sucked is that Clive Barker didn't start signing until 11 o'clock when it had been known that everyone starts signing at 10. There was not any communication, not even through the Monster Mania app that he would be signing at 11 until about 1030-ish someone came around or actually maybe been around like 10 or so someone came, someone from the con came by and let everyone know he's not going to be signing until 11 um that information should have been sent out through the app at least put it should have been put on on social media uh should have been told to people standing in line for clive barker much earlier than it actually was so that was kind of problematic in my opinion but it is also you know just a small issue Overall, like I said, I really like the convention. They do a great job. So, you know, just minor things here and there. Um, so, got to meet Clive Barker. It was really cool. Uh, went pretty fast. His signing line was pretty quick once every, everything got going. Uh, one of the really cool things is the private room they had him in. He had artwork just set up like wall to wall, like all the walls. He had his own original artwork there that you could purchase. He had these really old vintage books you could purchase. Uh, like rare posters, um, t-shirts, hats that he designed, like with original designs on them. There was amazing stuff there. The problem is that stuff is very pricey. So for someone who goes there and they have a very high budget, I'm not that person. I, I go with a, you know, much smaller budget when you ask like, hey, how's the, you know, how much is this little piece of artwork? And they're like, oh, that one's like 600 bucks. I'm like, okay, never mind. I'm just going to get this little poster thing. <laughs> I was like, ugh. Um, but hey, if you can afford it, good for you. Uh, I, I thought at the least, though, it was very cool that he had all that artwork there and it was kind of set up like a gallery so people could see it as they were waiting in line walking uh, to get their autograph. Uh, really cool to just look at all his stuff in person. Um, he's an impressive artist and obviously an amazing amazing creative mind so i i was there for clive barker mainly <clears throat> excuse me that was that was my goal and i achieved that goal uh i love him and i told him this story uh and it is relevant to you know me talking about how much i like him and why i was there to get his autograph uh when i was young my parents like forced me to read which created the situation where I started to hate reading because, you know, when you're growing up, when your parents force you to do things, you hate that thing. You're immediately like, no, I don't want to do that if you're going to make me do that. So I wasn't into reading and then I got into adulthood and I was kind of like, you know, I feel like it's still kind of childish that I don't read more. 
that I don't read more books. Like I would read magazines and comics and stuff like that. But I'm like, I feel like I should get into reading books. So I was like, what's a good entry point? Well, I love the, the Hellraiser movie a lot. And Clive Barker, who directed, wrote and directed that film, wrote and directed the source book called The Hellbound Heart. So maybe I should check that out. So I read The Hellbound Heart, fell in love with it. It is phenomenal writing. If you have not read it, do yourself a favor and read that. Uh, read, <laughs> read that. Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm tired. Do yourself a favor and read that. It is superbly written. It is a very tight story. There's no, like, wasted time, really. The tension is amazing. It, it And it's also pretty small. It's, it's a short book, so you can get through it pretty quick. So um, that kind of really opened me up to getting more into reading books, and so I read a bunch more of Clive's stuff, and then from there I jumped to some other horror authors. So uh, I told him this story, and I also, I said, so in a way, your books kind of helped promote adult literacy, and he kind of laughed at that, and he said, um, he was like, thank you very much, that's that's great, I'm glad, so um, very genuine guy, very nice guy, and uh, I got this, which I'm very happy about, um, this is like a Japanese uh, small poster, uh, and you can see Clive autographed it down there, so looks really good. I thought of all the poster type things or photo type things you could get signed. This was the best. Uh, and this was $70. Um, just getting an autograph is 60 with one of like the small uh, photos that celebrities usually have. That was 60. This is with an extra $10 upgrade to get this, which I think is totally worth the extra $10 to be honest. I mean, it's, this looks phenomenal. So very, very happy with that. Uh, my buddy who was with me, spent another ten dollars he got for eighty dollars this full-size poster that's a rare poster for nightbreed that looks unbelievable it's like a blood moon in the background with like these very stylish gates in front of it and it's just kind of like the silhouettes of the gates in front of the blood moon i mean it's a phenomenal poster it looks beautiful 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 he was like he saw it and he's just like look I am not, like, the hugest fan of Nightbreed. I mean, I like it. And he's like, but this is amazing looking. I got, I have to do it. So I fully understand that. I almost did it myself, but I was like, I kind of like that more. So super cool. But Clyde Barker was great. I hope as many people have wanted his autograph, got his autograph. He's he's a he's a great guy and an unbelievable creative mind, like I was saying. So after that, I went ahead and got in line for Shawnee Smith. I know a lot of people will know Shawnee from Saw. But my main focus for meeting Shawnee was, although I do really like Saw and I love how she did in Saw, my main focus was the 1988 Blob remake, which is such a great movie. I was about to say it's underrated, but I feel like it's gotten a lot more love over the past bunch of years because people will inevitably online and in person have the discussion of remakes Remakes aren't good by and large. And then there's always the rebuttal of, well, I can name some remakes that are actually pretty amazing. And The Blob is almost always on there when it comes to horror films. People almost always cite The Blob. And it is phenomenal. I love it. So when I met Shawnee Smith, um, and her line took a little bit longer, but that's because she was really taking her time with people. And she only made it like an extra $20 to get your, um, to get your picture taken with her. So a lot of people were doing that option. I did not because I don't. Yeah, you know, I'm just not big on doing the photos. I, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm there for the autographs. So I just went with the autograph, which she was 40. Uh, so then, if you wanted the photo and the autograph, 60. So I got her to sign a photo from the Blob. Of course, that's no big surprise to you guys. I'm sure uh, she wrote to Carlin, and it's getting bigger. Put her autograph and said Meg Penny which is her character from The Blob. Which, by the way, I have the latest release of The Blob on Blu-ray from Scream Factory coming to me in October. I pre-ordered it. Very, very excited about that. Um, so I will look at this photo that she signed while I'm watching the movie. Very cool. Uh, yeah, she was very nice. Uh, I talked to her about... The movie, The Blob, the remake, and I just kind of wondered, I was like, when you saw the script, you read the script, uh, did you think 
the blob remake why are we remaking the blob i'm not sure this is going to do all that great or did you think this is going to be great this has the ability to be awesome she said that she she really thought that it had the potential to be awesome because she thought the script was really well done she was very excited to do it and she's like you know it obviously didn't do super well when it came out but it's you know gotten way more popular now so I was like, but that's kind of what happens with a lot of the best movies. A lot of the best movies that stand the test of time didn't do all that great when they came out in theaters, and then they really gained steam and popularity with people down the road. So the blob is that way. Then I talked to her about her role in Saw, and I said, um, so with your role in Saw, did you have any idea that you could end up being with the series that long or that your character would end up being as significant as that? I mean, did you see that possibility? And she said, well, <laughs> she's like, she put it to me this way. She's like, well, I mean, I did realize that at the end of the first movie, I was the only person alive. So there was that possibility. And I was like, that's a very good point. I didn't think about it that way. So, yeah, so it was, um, yeah, it was cool. She was really nice, super nice. And I'm glad I got that. And then the other person that I went for, there were other people I thought about going for. I really, when I was going there thinking I was going to meet Ron Perlman, because he's super cool, super interesting. But by the time I was able to get around to Ron Perlman, he wasn't at his at his booth because he was doing f his photo op time. And because they do that, they do like professional photo ops that people can pay for, which are expensive. Um, so he wasn't there. There was a lot big line that had formed, and I was like, I'm kind of tired and hungry right now, so, I mean, he wasn't a must for me. Clive Barker was my main focus, so I'm good. So we cut out, but um, would have been cool to meet him, but, you know, had to make a decision at that point. So one person who I did go with, a lot of people are probably going to see this as kind of a curveball for me, um, Joey Lauren Adams. I know a lot of people, as I just said, they're like, what? So I love the movie Chasing Amy. It is one of my all-time favorite movies. I wouldn't say it's like top 10. It's maybe like top 50 or something, but I love that movie so much. The script is so well written. Um, it, it's a well executed film. I love Kevin Smith in general. And I thought that Joey Lauren Adams did a good job in that film. And I just love her role in it. I, I love the film in general. So to have her autograph is great. Once again, she was super nice. Very, very nice. I, I told her the story of how I showed this movie to my now wife very early in our relationship and we kind of bonded over it a little bit and I was like obviously things worked out well because now she's my wife and <laughs> she uh she was like oh that's really great thank you so much um yeah so I got her to sign this you know as you would probably assume this makes sense but she just wrote uh much love Joey Lauren Adams so yeah that was really cool she was awesome and the other thing is I talked to her about the Jane Silent Bob reboot, and I was like, I assume you're going to be in the reboot, which is coming out in October. And she was like, yes, I am in Jane Silent Bob reboot. And I was like, sweet. So, yes, everyone look out for that. I think the release dates, they're doing it through, like, Fathom events, and it's going to be, like, the 15th and the 16th or 18th, something like that. It's just, like, two show dates at select theaters to begin with. I don't know what's going on after that, but, you know, if you have interest, there's that information. So other things about the convention, um, the vendors are all, always really interesting. Uh, one vendor in particular I really need to talk about is um, Nightmares Unlimited. If you've been a person who watches my videos, you know that I put up a video of me unboxing one of the handmade Phantasm spheres uh, from Nightmares Unlimited that my wife had got me for my birthday. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that video because it gives you a really good idea of A, how good those things are, and B, how quality they are. So I stopped by that booth just because I wanted to talk to the guy who, uh, who does it all, he and his wife, who make all their handmade, high-quality props, and just wanted to say thank you once again because I love my Phantom, Phantasm Sphere. It is amazing. It looks, it looks phenomenal. It has weight to it. It is quality. And so he was like, oh, yeah, I saw your video. Thank you so much for that. And you know, we just kind of talked, and his new thing is he brought a bunch of lament configurations from Hellraiser, which makes sense because you had all these people from involved with Hellraiser at the convention, so that was smart. And so he was uh, saying that they just started doing that. They made them out of uh, legitimate mahogany wood, and all the sides is uh, actual, like, hand-done 
copper etching, which I can't even imagine how much work that is. Um, just everything he, he and his wife do in general, I cannot imagine how much work it is because they're super quality. But he had said, and, and I love to hear this from vendors, he said, the way I approach what I make is what would I want to collect? Like what quality level would I want as a person collecting these things? He's like, and that's what drives me to do it the way I do it. And I'm like, that's ex extremely admirable. I love it. Amazing. So uh, awesome. Nightmares Unlimited. People look them up uh, mainly through Facebook. And I think they have an Etsy. And Etsy is where the, the ordering goes through, I believe. So look up Nightmares Unlimited. Awesome stuff. Um, very quality. Very awesome. So uh, the other thing is I always buy soap or like lip balm or something for my wife when I'm there from Arcane Bunny, I believe is what it's called. Um, they make like handcrafted soaps and stuff. And what she really likes, they have ones with coffee, which smell amazing. So I do that as well. And I stopped by and got a lip balm. They didn't have the coffee soap, so we just went with the lip balm. Um, yeah, but one of the other things that occurred to me while I was there is that there are always so many vendors that – it's it's tough because the the flow of people walking through the vendor rooms is at a pretty decent pace because people just kind of want to keep it moving naturally. So I feel like you miss a lot. So I would recommend maybe maybe just slowing it down a little bit, stopping into each one, or take a few passes to make sure you see everything. Unless you're there with a super tight budget and you're not looking to spend extra money. So um, kind of what I do is I hit the autographs first and then I see kind of what's left from my budget, and then I go look at the vendors. Uh, like, I kind of looked a little bit at Fright Rags. Fright Rags was there. They're always there. They make amazing horror shirts, but they also had some horror socks, which I was thinking about getting, uh, but then I I ended up being like, eh, no, not this time, because I did enough damage with the, uh, with the autographs this time around. So maybe next time I'll go for the socks. They have, like, some Halloween 3 socks that look really cool uh, that I heavily thought about, so... In the future, in the future. And also, in the future, at some point, Nightmare Unlimited's um, Lament Configuration. Because that's a must for me, being a huge fan of Hellraiser. So, um, the, One of the only other issues is that the venue itself gets hot. There's, one, there's a pavilion where they end up having a lot of the signings, and the air circulation is poor there. And when you have that many bodies kind of packed into a space like that, it generates even more heat. And like I said, a lot of people were already sweating. Uh, and it just smelled like BO and it was uncomfortable. So it makes it a little tougher for waiting in line for autographs because of that. I know that's that's not a fault of the convention. That just has to do with the actual venue. So I wish that was, you know, not a problem. But also the while I was there, the... The hallway right next to where Clive Barker was signing just started leaking water. There was just like legitimate like three or four large leaks coming from the ceiling and it was not raining. And I was like, what is going on here? So there's some problems at that at that place that need to get taken care of. But like I said, not the fault of Monster Mania has nothing to do with them. Just some observations. Um, as far as who looked like they were very popular there... Uh, Shawnee Smith had a pretty decent line cont continuously. Obviously, Clyde Barker and Robert England had the largest lines. After them, the large lines were Kathy Najimy, who, if people don't, if people are like, what's the, I, I don't recognize the name. She was the third witch in Hocus Pocus. So not Ben Midler, not Ben Midler, not Sarah Jessica Parker. She was the third witch. Uh, big line for her, actually. I was kind of surprised. Like, I thought she'd have a line, but I didn't know she'd have that many people interested. So that was cool to see. And who was the other one? Danielle Harris. She consistently has good lines. She had a pretty significant line. Uh, she was from Halloween 4, I want to say. I haven't seen all the Halloween, so I'm guessing. I think it was Halloween 4. Um, and then since they had all the people there from Hellraiser, uh, they were busy, especially uh, Doug Bradley. Doug Bradley is always busy at these conventions. It's amazing. I cannot believe the amount of mileage this guy has gotten out of that one role. It's crazy. It's cool, though. I love it. Like, he's my favorite. I I have three, three autographs from him in my room here. I mean, obviously, you can see the one up there. Uh, and then I have one of just him. And then I have one of him and the three other Cenobites. And... Um, 
he's an awesome guy. If you if you ever have the opportunity, you should definitely meet him, get an autograph from him. Uh, I saw him outside of the of the convention, and he was walking. I was just like Doug, and he was like, "Oh hey, what's up?" Just like nice jovial dude. Uh, on the other side of that, because everyone is usually very nice. Uh, my buddy met Ric Flair, and Ric Flair was not that nice of a guy. He did do the autograph and everything, took a picture with him, but my buddy told him like this heartfelt story of how through Ric Flair he was able to bond with his grandmother because his grandmother was huge into wrestling, and Ric Flair was her favorite wrestler. And so through him getting into it, he forged a much better relationship with his grandmother and he tells him this story and Ric Flair's response was "Uh uh-huh thanks so um you know not a big surprise because I had heard that Ric Flair's not that great of a guy but for my buddy it was it was pretty crushing because he was really looking forward to meeting him and uh you know it's it's a letdown when you have a an experience like that where you want it to be special. When you're meeting these celebrities, you want it to be kind of special. You want them to be nice. And I can't say that I've had any experiences with celebrities I've met where I walked away and was like, man, they weren't that nice. Like, they're usually at least somewhat cordial. And most of them that I meet are super nice. So, you know, yeah, that was just a little disappointing. But anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, pretty standard, good quality uh, Monster Mania always is i i love it um i'm looking forward to going to the one in hunt valley yes i'm going to that one mainly because bruce campbell is the headliner for that one i am so excited for bruce campbell he um he's kind of on my bucket list for celebrity autographs so uh they announced him like about a year ago for that convention i bought tickets immediately i was like i'm not missing out on meeting bruce campbell Uh, i hear he's a phenomenal guy that everyone i know or have heard of who have gotten his autograph are like, he's so nice. He's so awesome. So I'm super, super excited for that. That is the first weekend of October. I think it's October 5th. That's the Saturday that I'm going. So um, show up to Hunt Valley, guys. There's some other really good guests. Should I read it? Okay, you can drop out of this um, video right now if you want to, if you don't want to know everyone who's going to be at that convention. But if you do stick around, I'm about to read it. Um, But don't, If you're going to sign off right now, if you're going to not watch the video now, please hit that subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It can mean a lot for my channel. And put some comments down there. I'd love to hear from people who went to uh, Monster Mania 43 and get your feelings, how things went, what autographs you got, how excited you were, what your interactions were like with the celebrities. I really want to hear that stuff. Okay, so for Monster Mania 44 in Hunt Valley, Maryland, it is Bruce Campbell, like I said. Uh, Then they're doing a reunion for Scream. They have Nev Campbell, Skeet Ulrich, Roger Jackson, who did the voice of Ghostface in uh, Scream, Matthew Lillard, which I'm very excited about. I have this thing about Matthew Lillard. I love his acting. Um, I've seen a lot of movies with him in it. I especially loved him in Hackers. I know. It's a terrible movie, but for some reason I just love that movie. So I'm going to get him to sign something from Hackers. Uh, Jamie Kennedy, and that kind of rounds out the Scream people. James Jude Courtney, who played the new Michael Myers. Nick Castle, who played the old Michael Myers. Sandy Johnson, who was in the original Halloween from 1978, it says on here. Uh, Billy Zane, who obviously was in, like, Demon Knight and is best known for, like, Titanic and stuff like that. Lisa and Louise Burns, who are the two scary twins from the original Shining. That's exciting. Uh, Danny Lloyd, the kid from The Shining. I'm, I have to get him. And Leah Beldum, who was the um, the good-looking portion of the old crone in the room in 237, I want to say. Am I right about that? The room is 237? I don't know. Uh, then for Candyman, they have Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen. I'm going to get them. That's awesome. Ted Raimi, thinking about Ted Raimi. I like him. Uh, Daniel Harris again. Serena Vincent, who is in Cabin Fever, is one of the things she's known for. Dick Wyand uh, from Friday the 13th Part 5. He played Roy. Diamond Dallas Page, because they like, always have wrestlers involved. He's a nice guy. I've actually met the guy before. I didn't get his autograph. I just randomly started talking to him. He's a really nice guy. Uh, Kane Hodder again. CJ Graham, who was another Jason. Um, and that's it for now, but I think they might be announcing some more coming up. So, 
I'll be there. And then I will do another one of these videos for it. So thank you everyone for checking this one out. Please help support me with my channel. Hit that subscribe. It literally takes like a second and it means a lot to me. Uh, put some comments down there, like I said. Tell me about your experiences. And are you going to go to the Hunt Valley one? And if so, who do you want for your autographs? Um, I know that Bruce Campbell line is going to be long, so I would encourage people to get there as early as you can. That's the best way to do it. Anyway, thanks again for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.